Hello and welcome to the Met Office 10 Day Trend in which I'll mainly be talking about the wanderings of one area of high pressure. High pressure has certainly been a theme this February. We're up to the three quarter mark and we'd normally expect around three quarters of February average rainfall. But that's not what we've seen across a large part of the UK. England and Wales, these dark browns indicate less than 20% rainfall so far in the first three weeks out of four. Scotland and Northern Ireland, we've got lighter browns that would indicate wetter conditions and in fact for northwest Scotland, white colour and even one or two blue spots indicates average or slightly above average rainfall for February so far. And that's because although high pressure has dominated to the south of the UK, we've seen some weather systems topple into the north and that is indeed how we see things evolve through Thursday. We're going to have a frosty but bright start in the north and then cloud increases through the day and by the afternoon spells of rain into the north and northwest of Scotland accompanied by a strengthening wind. Some showers to begin things in the south but those showers soon clear away. Sunny spells arrive into much of England and Wales by the end of the afternoon. 9 or 10 Celsius in the south, 8 or 9 further north. That strong wind though affecting the Northern Isles and potentially reaching gale force in some exposed spots. Here's a cold front and it sinks south across the UK to bring some rain, a narrow band, but perhaps some heavy bursts for a time as it pushes through. And by Friday at two o'clock, it's across Northern Ireland into Wales and central southern England. Now, as that cold front moves through, temperatures will fall away and there'll be a strengthening wind bringing some showers to the North Sea coast. Seven, eight, nine Celsius on the coast there, but when you add on the wind, it's coming from the north, it's gonna feel cold, two, three, five Celsius, six or seven further southwest. But nothing particularly untoward for the time of year, of course. Now, as that cold front clears, it brings that chillier air south and it also brings clearing skies. And as that happens, high pressure builds in. It's gonna be a frosty start to the weekend, a fairly widespread frost across the UK under those clear skies. But plenty of bright weather on Saturday itself. We've got this slice of cold but clear air. So Crisp winter's day, I think, on Saturday for many. However, there will be a few showers coming into the east coast at times, particularly eastern and southeastern parts of England. So it's not going to be entirely dry. The brightest weather will be towards the north and the west. Then as we go through the weekend, the high pressure slightly migrates towards the east. That will help to, well, recirculate some of this mild but cloudy Atlantic air. So although it looks like the winds are coming from the east, they're not really. The air originates from the Atlantic. It just topples in around the top of the high and then comes in uh, via the North Sea. So feeling colder than it has felt for the last few days, but nothing exceptional. The air at this stage isn't coming from Scandinavia or Siberia. It's just circulating around an area of high pressure centered over the UK. So temperatures by day, close to average. By night, there will be a few breaks in the cloud and uh, under those breaks, some frost pockets, but actually for many, it's cloudy at night, so frost free. There'll be a lot of cloud continuing into the start of next week and some of those showers continuing into the east as well. Brightest skies will be towards the west and northwest where the clearest skies by night will lead to a frost in places. It will also be breezy, especially in the south, the breeze brisk along the English Channel coast and it will feel cold in that breeze. But like I say, at this stage, the air is not coming from a particularly cold direction. It's recirculating around the area of high pressure. Fast forward to Thursday, the 2nd of March, and this is the most likely uh, outcome. We've got high pressure just to the northwest of the UK and the air just milling around that high pressure and bringing Average or just below average temperatures. Dry for many, but you wouldn't rule out a few showers into the east at times and some bright spells by day as well. Now this most likely outcome, 51% probability, looks remarkably similar to the second most likely outcome for the same day. Just that high pressure drifting a little bit further north in this outcome. And I'll show you the third most likely outcome because again, it's remarkably similar. High pressure dominating across the UK, keeping things relatively settled, although a few showers into the east, always a possibility, and temperatures a little below average, but nothing exceptional. So you might be wondering if you're a regular viewer of these 10 day trends or our deep dives that we do on our YouTube channel on a Tuesday, whether this is because of the sudden stratospheric warming that we had last week, because of course, we saw this sudden warming of the stratosphere above the North Pole, and that, 
has resulted in a reversal of the wind circulation in the stratosphere around the North Pole. Now, we've explained before how that reversal in the wind circulation around the North Pole in the stratosphere can help to slow the jet stream down, and that can ultimately lead to these blocking areas of high pressure sitting in one place for a long period of time. That's what we're seeing next week, but actually, at first, this isn't because of the sudden stratospheric warming. It's just a coincidence that it's also occurring at the same time, because there's a lag effect from the sudden stratospheric warming, which we've explained before, and so we're not expecting any impacts from that SSW to take place for the UK until around the first week of March. Also, there's another thing happening on the other side of the world, an uptick in thundery activity over the Pacific, and that can lead to perturbations in the jet stream, and that can lead to a reinforcement of large areas of high pressure like this. And so the impacts from those two outside factors are looking increasingly like to affect our weather from next weekend, from the 4th, 5th of March onwards. And let's just have a look at some of the computer model output from that weekend. And it does indeed look like high pressure will continue to dominate our weather from next weekend and beyond. But this is where the computer models start to differ. The position of that high pressure is crucial. Now, 31% probability for Saturday the 4th of March has that high pressure roughly in the same place as it's been all week, just to the northwest of the UK, roughly average temperatures or just below relatively settled weather, but nothing particularly cold. But there's another scenario that starts to appear in the computer model output at this stage, and at 31% probability as well, and that pushes the high pressure towards Greenland, allowing much colder northerly winds to arrive. You can see the temperatures dropping away in the north because of that. And this, these colours here show precipitation, which with the northerly uh, could end up with sleet, snow, hail, and so on. So those are the scenarios that start to play out as we get into the following weekend and the week beyond. With the sudden stratospheric warming and with those thunderstorms in the Pacific helping to reinforce high pressure close to the UK, but the computer models differing in terms of the placement of that high, whether it drifts to the northwest and allows northerly winds to bring colder conditions, or whether it stays close to the UK and keeps things quite quiet, or whether it drifts a little bit further south, perhaps that's being shown up in some of the output, and allows milder air to come in from the Atlantic. So it's all to play for, even if the general outlook uh, is fairly well established with that high pressure in charge, its placement is key, and we'll keep you updated on all of that right here at the Met Office.